Greetings family, Sister Shanice here. How you doing? Certainly hope that you've been having an absolutely fantastic, bombastic, blacktastic day. Certainly hope that all the goals and aspirations that you have set for yourself uh, are coming to through, through to fruition. Uh, so I just want to rise up all of my subscribers. If you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome. Please do subscribe and uh, also everyone, please do uh, give us the thumbs up. Up. So we welcome you to the Sister Shanice Show. I've got another really interesting topic that I'm going to be covering today. And this one actually takes us back into our history. Now, uh, one of my areas of interest is African history, our history. And uh, as I'm sure most of you are, are aware, we as a people we've been around on this earth for millions of years and there's archaeological evidence to prove that uh, so you know to study our history the breadth and the depth and the scope of our history is vast um, so i'm not even going to attempt to do any of that I'm, but i am going to look into a snippet of our history but if you wanted to research our history you could go back about say 10,000 years and find you know volumes huge amounts of information information available to give you an insight into our history over the past say 10,000 years. There's huge colossal monuments and archaeological findings, there's symbols of our history everywhere and uh, you know the reason why, one of the reasons why I'm doing this show today is because what it proves to me is that our history could be staring at us in full sight. And it's, unless you know uh, what you're looking for, it's a case of, you know, walking past our history on a daily basis. So uh, if you're interested in studying our history, you could study it from an anthropological perspective, an archaeological perspective. Uh, you can study our history in terms of our languages and our dialects. You can study it uh, in terms of um, our architecture, um, our DNA sequencing, uh, research documents, uh, diaries from sailors and merchants and traders. I mean, there's just like volumes and volumes of information that's available uh, that you, and you could just choose your area of interest uh, to study our history. You can even study our history from a spiritual and a religious perspective as well. Vast amounts of information. Anyway, one of the areas of my interest uh, that uh, I've been observing over time is our history from an archaeological, no, from an architectural perspective. Mm. Now, what I've observed and noticed uh, regarding our African uh, architectural style is that there is a very distinctive ancient African architectural style that uh, is evident from the ruins all over Africa. It's evident uh, even up until today in some of the buildings uh, that have been preserved that are not necessarily credited to us, but do actually comprise of this very distinctive African, Asian African architectural style and design. So when you look uh, at the uh, architectural style in Africa of the Asian African buildings, yeah, because there are so many of these ruins that date back thousands of years uh, around Africa, we can squarely place the origins of this particular architectural style into Africa. And what we can see is that these uh, styles were developed over thousands of years, of, over many, many centuries. And uh, from Africa, we can see that our people took this style, you know, um, through North Africa, uh, right over to Spain, to Portugal, to France. And even in England, we can see this distinctive Asian African style, even in England, even though they haven't given credit to these buildings, uh, to the Africans, but I'm quite sure that in time, you know, all of this history that's hidden from us in plain sight uh, will be revealed. Now, there were a particular group of uh, Africans who uh, traveled out, out from Africa, uh, from the northern Africa. They used to build all over North Africa, Tunisia, Morocco, those sort of places. And uh, they went into Spain, conquered Spain, and they were referred to as the Moors. 
And what most of them used to do is to build their fortresses or they might call them castles or they might call them palaces on hills. And that was very typical of Africans. We would build our palaces or the kings would build their palaces uh, on hills because that would give them a great vantage point. When I went to Zimbabwe and visited the great kingdom of Zimbabwe, we had to climb to the top of a big hill uh, to where the castle once stood. And from there you could get a 360 degree uh, view of the entire surrounding and you could see you know for for miles uh, so if there was a, an invading army or you know any enemies or anything was happening you could your guards would be on the lookout and they would be able to spot it probably a day or two before they would even reach the the palace and so that would give you know the king's army time to organize you know an attack or a response depending on you know the who was arriving. As I said, the group that uh, of Africans that these buildings are credited to in Europe are the Moors, okay? But obviously the Moors were Africans. So you can imagine my surprise when I visited um, a hotel in the Gambia. Uh, it was a non-Gambian hotel, but uh, I, you know, happened to visit this hotel and as I was walking around the hotel, I could see evidence of the very distinctive Asian African architectural design and art all over this hotel. And again, you know, as I was walking around, I'm like, this is our history just hidden in plain sight. And it basically just gave me a tiny little glimpse into what maybe one of these castles may have looked like before they were totally destroyed. And yes, I know that there are, there's documentary evidence from the merchants and the sailors and the visitors to Africa that have written books and that have described what the inside of some of these palaces looks like. And they sound splendid indeed. But, you know, there's very little um, kind of artwork or, or design work that actually brings, you know, those descriptions to life. And so, you know, when I visited this hotel, it kind of brought the description that I've read from one of those books to life and it gave me just a little bit of a glimpse into what, you know, one of these palaces or a corner of these palaces could look like. So I just want to share uh, the uh, this hotel view uh, as I was going around and just, you know, tell you what was going through my mind as I was walking around this hotel. Here we go. So one of the first thing I, things I noticed about this hotel as I was uh, approaching it was the wall itself and the design on the top of the wall. Now, um, you will see that style uh, quite often on many of the ancient traditional African architectural uh, forts, fortresses, palaces and kingdoms and they tended to build these forts on the top of the hills as well. And uh, at the entrance of many of these great African parcels, castles, you get these huge wooden doors made of the finest uh, African wood. And then you'd also get the crest on the um, uh, wall, on the door, which would uh, tell you what the what king it was that resided there. So you get the king's crest. And then once you go inside, you might, as you've done in this can see in this hotel, you know, get this corridor of columns, real tall, colossal columns. We love our, loved our columns in our architectural styles. You see them uh, in the palaces and the kingdoms all over Egypt. You can, you saw them uh, Greece, in Greece, when Greece replicated the Egyptian architectural style. And then you see them in a lot of the um, pictures to, to do with Rome as well, because as we know, the Romans took over the Greek and they also uh, adopted and incorporated that Asian uh, African architectural style as well. And, uh, you know, we, we made tiles. And so you can see a lot of our tile work in the mosaic type styles. You can see the black and white we had. Uh, a real interest in black and white tiles as well. You can see this even today in some of the secret society type venues in London and other parts of the world. Uh, it was very synonymous and symbolic of the works of the Moors as well. So you see black and white tiles and I saw the black and white tiles in this hotel and also the pots, you know, the huge 
pots, the pottery, pots made out of clay uh, that the Egyptians uh, had in their tombs and obviously had in their kingdoms and their palaces. Uh, they were scattered around this hotel as well. I noticed them as I was walking around. The dome shape which is synonymous with the Moors who brought the, um, who were bringing the Muslim religion into um, the uh, Spain and that part of the world. A lot of their um, palaces that they built during that time and their mosque had the dome shape. And inside, when it was a palace, it would be very beautifully uh, decorated, wonderful works of arts. And also you would see in their palaces and we'd read the descriptions of these pools. Uh, in fact, the Moors actually, um, in England alone, actually built thousands of baths you know and the baths were like swimming pools and uh, in many of their piazza areas in the courtyard areas they would have the pools they would have the fountains beautiful fountains and wonderful creative works of arts you know horses and lions with water spouting out of the mouths all from the minds of the Africans and uh, you'd have these huge pots maybe around the pools as well uh, uh, as, as decoration. And uh, the furniture during the days in, in Africa would be inlaid with gold because there was a huge amount of mining that was taking place in Africa during those times. Uh, one of the arts that we invented was music. So there would have been musical instruments around and people playing music. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of pride in the way that we built and we built story buildings. Thousands of years ago, we were building story buildings as well. So, uh, you know, this hotel was just speaking to me about our African history. Um, obviously, in Africa, things grow, trees and plants grow very quickly. So we had beautiful gardens, we had tall, established trees. And uh, back then, we didn't clear all of the trees just to build a building. We would incorporate these trees and these buildings into the design of our architects and so you know along the walkway and along the roads approaching our, our palaces you would have you know roads that are lined with uh, palm trees and other beautiful trees and flowers trees and you would smell the beautiful flowers and the fragrance from the flowers as you walked around uh, these palaces and uh, there would be areas where people could sit and lounge and talk. Of course, we had lighting back in the days as well. So there would have been lanterns that would be lit at night. It would have created a beautiful ambience as well. So this hotel was just screaming to me of African architecture. It had the arches, it had the columns, the huge potteries, the African uh, black and white tiles, uh, the long corridors with the colossal columns, uh, and also, you know, even the um, obliques, oblique, obliques uh, which some call the Cleopatra needle. They even managed to incorporate that as well into their uh, design. So this is a hotel in the Gambia that was just bringing to life our African history uh, through uh, arc the architectural design of this particular hotel. Uh, here we can see some of the pyramid pointed structures, which is what you get on the top of the Cleopatra's needle or the obliques. Uh, you, you can actually see the obliques uh, today from Africa in um, in Central Park, in New York, you can see one in London, you can see one in Paris. You know, these were original African obliques which were taken from Africa and brought all the way to Europe. Uh, you know, and uh, these um, uh, obliques are um, used to uh, represent where the king's tombs were. So these uh, Asian African Egyptians uh, that built these obliques, they would actually carve it out of one huge piece of stone. Again, you know, all of this is just masterpieces of African art and African treasure. Yeah, and some of these uh, obliques, they would stand almost 80 feet high. 
and uh, on it there would be stories carved out you know like false doors and windows it it would look like you know a multi-story building in terms of the way that it was designed and then it would have this pyramid shape on the top and as i said uh, they would be all over certain parts of uh, uh, egypt in africa because it marked out where the pharaoh, where the pharaoh uh, the african pharaoh tombs uh, were as well so these relics of african history can be seen uh, all over uh, europe and as well that can still be seen in africa uh, but again unless you get the chance to visit africa you may not even know uh, of the existence of all of these treasures that just represent uh, our history uh, even if you're looking at it in New York or in London and you wouldn't know you know that they are the original pieces as well that were made and created by the hands of our African ancestors uh, before you know they were uh, taken and brought to this part of the world and the fact that you know New York's got one uh, Rome's got one, Paris has got one, London has got one. What does that tell you? And they all come from um, Egypt and they weren't given to them. It means that these lot are all partners in crime when it comes to robbing uh, our African uh, continent of some of its treasures. But uh, we'll say they're just taking care of it for now. But uh, yeah, certainly hope that you've enjoyed this little tour of this hotel and that, you know, um, like I did when I went around it. Now you could see the, the, the symbolism in this hotel um, that was just mirrored off of our African arts and our African history. So I certainly hope you enjoyed that tour of the hotel. Um, do your own research when you visit hotels, when you visit places of interest, you know, look out for the Asian African, uh, the typical African architectural styles uh, that can be traced way back to Africa and look out for it in your country where you are. Start spotting those African uh, palaces and those old African um, uh, castles and forts and fortresses and uh, realize that they are, you know, snippets from our history. Thank you so, so much for watching. Sister Shanice out of here for now. One love family.